tutorial. Today's video, we're going to be looking at Giants Editor. Pretty much the program you need to have and need to know how to use to make mods for Farming Simulator 19 here. Uh, this is Giants Editor version 8.1 here for Farming Simulator 19. And other than maybe like some real basic edits, everyone, you pretty much need to know how to use this program for modding for Farming Simulator. So let's get started here. I already have it open. I have a mod open here as well. You open it up just like you would normally any other uh, program here, right? Uh, so real quick on the window here, you got a couple things. You got your uh, scene graph here. This is all the items that are in the mod here. So you got uh, shape files, uh, these little blue, green, red dots here. Those are transform locations. They don't actually contain uh, like a shape. They're just a location. Uh, down here we got user attributes. Uh, this is probably more for like maps and stuff, fill triggers, stuff like that. That'll have additional attributes with them. Uh, at least in my experience, Evan, I've done mostly tractors and equipment, so I don't think I've ever really seen this used for that. Uh, down below here, you have the console. The console here shows your error messages, anything else that's going on. Definitely want to pay close attention to that when modding. Very important there. Watch for error messages. If something's wrong, it should tell you. Uh, moving up over to the other side here, we got attributes. So if we click on something here, we we'll click on that uh, fender. Let's actually go click on this one here. Uh, so you obviously have the name, you have the ID, and then you have the index path. The index path is very important for the XML. Uh, this is what the XML uses to reference parts of the I3D. So if you go to an XML file, you see it'll say zero, whatever, whatever, and that's referencing this location in the I3D. And then also down here, we just got our translate location. So that's where it is in the relative to the rest of this mod here. Uh, rotates, scales. That should be fairly straightforward. Uh, visibility, that, that does exactly what you think it does. Uh, we have clip distance here. Uh, typically, you want to have that uh, per giant set to 300. Uh, it is, if you go up to the global one here, set to 300. Um, I'm not sure how important it is to have all the ones underneath of it set to 300. But uh, anyway, that one is set to, uh, was that 10, uh, one million, I think, or something like that. Um, and also down here, also have rigid body. Uh, this is what will give something a collision. And then it'll bring up the rigid body tab here. Uh, and now I don't fully claim to understand what all this does here, everyone. Uh, so if you need to have something that needs to be set as a rigid body, go look at maybe an in-game piece of equipment, see once what the rigid body is set to, and then you can set it the same here because uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can set and you can really mess stuff up if you don't uh, don't get this right. So uh, moving on down here, let's see. Yeah, it looks like that's pretty good. Uh, we do have over on this tab here for the shape. Uh, you can cast receive shadow, non-renderable. That also make it invisible too, by the way. Uh, distance, CPU, a whole bunch of other options there as well. Now, moving on down here to the material editing section. This probably needs a video all of its own, and I'll probably do that. But uh, real quick here, everyone, you can add a texture file. So this wheel here actually has a texture file on it, and that's what that uh, texture. If it wasn't for the dirt on it, that is what you would uh, hopefully see on that tire. Moving on down here to the next one. We got our, our albedo color. Uh, you cannot use that if you have a texture. So if I were to take off this uh, texture here, then I could uh, just put in a color in there. It'll let you uh, select color. Should be fairly uh, straightforward with that. Uh, gloss map here. Gloss map is your dirt and wear texture. And unfortunately, with this mod, because it's an older converted mod, it doesn't have a proper dirt and wear texture for Farming Simulator 19. Uh, that's where you end up. You can see this tire is completely dirty. And if we were to turn the dirt off, which we can actually do here in just a minute, I should be able to anyway. I think, is it this one? Nope, maybe it's this one. There we go. Oh, it's actually not going to wear. Okay, no wear on that. That's rather interesting here. So there is a dirt wear on that. Anyway, let me uh, turn this back on here just for example. Uh, so yes, again, that's your dirt and wear texture. Like I said, it's not a proper dirt and wear texture here for 19, so that's why it is completely dirty. Uh, down here, you're going to your normal map. Your normal map is what will give something a little bit more uh, what I call fake 3D-ness. Um, if we were to put a normal map on here, let's just go to... Oh, uh, let's see what's here. Am I going to have to find? I guess we're going to have to go to the Farming Simulator 19 data folder here. Uh, the Farming Simulator 19 data folder is where you can find a lot of shared assets, shaders, all that good stuff. So in this case, let's just do... How about wire normal there? And if you watch this tire carefully here, you should see like some uh, 3D-ness up here to it. Yes. Uh, of course, not really maybe proper for the tire here, but uh, there you go. Got a little bit more uh, 3D-ness to it, right? Uh, by adding a normal map. Again, it adds more of a fake 3D. Uh, missive map, I'm not entirely sure what that does. I've never used that. 
And then down here you have alpha blending that's used for typically items with transparencies, logos, decals. Uh, these windows up here, if they're set up right, probably have that. Yes, they do. They do have alpha blending. Uh, they are using the window diffuse and a mist diffuse. Huh? Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, anyway. Yes, that's what that looks like. And then also down here, we have the custom shader. This is where you would load up a shader. Let's actually, you know what? Does the window, no, the windows do not have a shader. So if we were to put a shader on the windows here, just to actually do this here a minute, farm and see the 19 data folder. We're going to go to shaders, load up the vehicle shader. That's typically what you would use on most uh, vehicles. Yeah, the windows become completely dirty. That's fine. We're going to change up the gloss map here as well. That's not the right gloss map for this. We're going to go to shared. Uh, we can put default specular. Uh, default specular, really quick, no dirt, no wear, uh, which maybe that's what you want. Or if you want a little bit of dirt and wear on your windows, window specular here. And uh, if this is set up right, which looks like it's probably not, so maybe we don't want that one. Let's just do, uh, well, actually, you know what? That might still work here. Let's see once if it'll let us set this to a window. Oh, it's not going to complain. Okay, that is a bit surprising. I thought it might complain. It's not going to. That's fine. Is this set up right? Looks like it should be. Let's also set this to an in-game file here as well. Common uh, mistake there. Most modders, they like to uh, pull these files in, and they don't use the right uh, files here. So we're going to use the in-game from Giants files here. So default normal. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so these windows aren't set up right, so I can't really do this. But anyway, but there you go. Now we got uh, some semi-clear uh, windows. Like I said, it needs to be pulled into a 3D program there and set up properly. So, again, just to reiterate, Heaven, you can't always use Giants Editor to do everything. You do need Blender or some such program to do some stuff. Well, actually, a lot of stuff here with this. Okay, uh, now we're going to move on. I'll show you how to uh, move some stuff around here in Giants Editor. Like I said, again, this is uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this program here, so I'm probably not going to be able to cover it all in this video. If you have any other additional suggestions, requests, just uh, put them down below. Okay, well, now we're going to cover how to uh, use the actual editor here itself as far as the uh, 3D components are concerned. Uh, first off, how to look around in the editor. Uh, to look around, you need to hold down on the right mouse button, and then you can just move the mouse up down. That'll look around. Uh, to zoom in, just use the uh, scroll wheel. That will let you zoom in. Also, while uh, holding down on the right mouse button, you can use the WASD keys to very quickly zoom in out and look around. This is probably going to be more useful on editing maps. I don't typically use this. Again, with vehicles, you don't really need to, you know, look around that quickly, right? Whereas maps, a little bit bigger, obviously you probably would. Uh, also, you can increase the navigation speed down on the right side there. You'll see nav speed. It says 10 plus minus. You can use your plus minus keys on the keyboard, and that will increase or decrease that. Okay, now if you're to click on an element in here, and that's just uh, as simple as just, you know, left clicking on something. That's all it's to that. You'll see this little uh, control up here here. It's got red, blue, and green arrows for it. Obviously, that's for all three of the different axes. You also have these radiuses here as well. And you also have a little dot. So there's several things you can do with this control here. First off, the arrows will let you move it. So you can move it back and forth, in and out, you know, up and down. The highlight, whatever one you want to move here. And then you just uh, use your mouse there, click and drag, and it'll go where you want it to go. Uh, next off on these radiuses here, this will let you rotate it. And again, in all three axes is here. Should be pretty uh, pretty straightforward on that one there, right? Next, you have the boxes on top of the arrows. This is what will let you scale an object. So you can scale it. And again, in all three axes. And last but not least, there's a box in the middle here. This will let you scale on all three axes at once. So you can scale all three at once. Again, you just move the mouse there, and that will scale that object. So that's how you use that. Uh, next up, let's uh, cover moving stuff around in the editor here. Uh, that's uh, rather interesting how Giants does it here. And I notice our tire in the back here is not showing up. So uh, what we can potentially do for that, if we go to shape here, check the tangents. Yes, there we go. That's all it took. And then oh, I see that tire here apparently has the same texture as the front tire. Kind of good there with that uh, wire mesh on there for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, let's just get rid of that. Uh, for getting rid of materials, you just click on that X there, and then, of course, you click on the little three dots, and then you can uh, search for a texture. I think we covered that already. Let's say you wanted to move this around in the editor. A lot of the uh, Control-C, Control-V, Control-D, uh, same as other programs, works as well in Giants Editor here, so you can cut, paste, duplicate, all that good stuff. So if you want to duplicate it, Control-D, 
Uh, you can also access it from up here as well, by the way. So cut, place, you know, all that good stuff. And then you can see now we got a uh, duplicate of that one. Now you can also cut and paste this one. So let's just uh, control X or you can copy it to whatever you want to do. We're going to cut it and let's just move it to, let's move it to the light one here. And we paste it. Notice it paste the location to the new location. Uh, hopefully that makes sense there. I, and basically you're taking the location of this tire. Click on this tire. Notice the location on the uh, transform here. It's right there. It takes this location and pastes it to the new location. The new location on the lights here, click on the lights again, is down here. So I'll put that one down there. Now, let's say maybe you don't want to do that. You want to move it to a new location, but keep where it's at. Let's go back here. If I were to duplicate this, create a new one. So again, we got two of them. Let's say we want to move it down to the lights category, but you want it to stay there. You're going to do what's a middle mouse move. or So middle mouse, drag and drop. So you're going to hold down on the middle mouse, and you're just going to drag and drop it. So we'll drag and drop it down into the lights here. So now you notice it is still at the location where it was at. It hasn't changed. It's now under the light node but it has stayed where it's at. Whereas if I, again, if I copy and paste this, so if I uh, create another one, and then if I were to uh, cut this, paste it down to the lights, you notice it will move down there. So you can use that to your advantage. Some stuff, maybe you'll want it to move to the new location. Other stuff, you want it to stay where it's at, middle mouse move. That uh, really comes in handy. Uh, I think that's probably most of the stuff here on the uh, scene graph, everyone. Again, you do have some stuff up here. Uh, we'll show you this here too, man. This really comes in handy. Let's go to options here a minute, uh, or preferences, I guess it is. Uh, under preferences, you have your external tools, uh, your text editor path. In my case, I use Notepad++. Highly, highly recommend you get that program. You'll want that one. Uh, installation, I don't know how much that matters. I can't say I've used that before. Uh, also, scale under here. If you're using Blender, I believe you want to have that scale set to 1. I think the default's 100, and that might be more of a Maya thing. So... Uh, at least when you're using Blender, I've always found you want to set this. I think, again, the default, if I remember correctly, everyone, is 100. If you're using Blender, set it to 1. You have a lot better uh, results with that. But anyway, if you have the uh, text editor set up here, you can click this button right here. And no, I don't want to save this because I've uh, been messing around here, right? But that will bring up the i3D file here in the text editor. Uh, very important, and we probably should cover this in another video. But uh, with the i3D file, you can also open the i3D file in a text editor, and that is going to be required for some things to uh, do in here, especially when editing uh, materials. But you can see all the stuff in here. It's pretty much what's in the editor, just uh, in a text format, right? And obviously you can't visually see it. So that's the uh, purpose of that uh, text editor here. Also, I'll show you a couple other things here, at least one more thing anyway. Uh, very important, under the uh, edit here, you have freeze transforms. Oh, let's see. If we can uh, create something to set this up here a minute, what would be a good example? Maybe this uh, tire again. Let me uh, duplicate the tire. We're going to create another tire. I am going to cut it. We want to cut it? No, let's uh, move it. Let's do a middle mouse move here maybe. Let's move it down to the lights. Notice the uh, transform is still up here yet, and if you look at the translate, you can see it's got some values there. Let's say we, for some reason... And this wouldn't be a good idea with this tire. But let's say for some reason you wanted to freeze the transform location. Uh, this is going to be more important, like uh, setting up steering wheels, wheels, that type of thing. Uh, and you want to freeze the transform. So let's go to freeze transform. Uh, you can freeze the translate. You can freeze the rotate and or the scale. You can either one of the combination. Also preserve instances. Um, see, I don't know if we can make this do this or not. Probably not. Uh, instances in this case, everyone, there's two instances of this tire because I duplicated it. So there's going to be two. Actually, there might be three. I'm not sure if the other side is considered part of this one or not, but there is for sure two of these. Let's just uh, freeze the translate here. Actually, I, if I uncheck that, that might have made a difference. But now the uh, translate location is on here. Notice and there's no longer any numbers here. So it's zeroed out that translate location. That's very important for like wheels. Um, steering wheel, stuff like that, where you need to have the translate location, the center of rotation on the wheel or whatever object you're animating. You need to have that on the center of it or you need it in a certain position. So again, you know, when you rotate around, it rotates around the center of the wheel. Uh, if we hadn't done this, and I don't know if I can undo this here. 
There we go. Uh, if I rotate it now, it'll probably actually still rotate because it looks like that transform has stayed there. And then I don't know if I can get an example in this particular mod here, this or not. But if the transform location was actually, you know what, let's uh, use, if we were to rotate this transform here, everyone, notice how that tire rotates. You obviously wouldn't want that. That's where an example where you'd want to freeze that uh, transform location, right? And just for the fun of it here, if I were to do this, edit, freeze, transforms. If we were to leave the preserve instances unchecked, this might, oh, it did not mess, no, I guess it didn't mess up the tire behind it. A lot of times it probably would mess up the tire behind it, but uh, in this case it, it did not. Actually, you know what? No, it did too, everyone. It did mess up that tire. Yep. As I suspect, everyone, because we got two instances of this tire here, uh, they're just copied, right? Uh, it did mess up this tire, so that's kind of what I figured would happen. And now uh, if you notice, yeah, it's not. Uh, it's rotating around in an axis. Yeah, you wouldn't want your tire going around like that, right? Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Uh, let's see. Under here we can uh, create transform groups. Uh, again, those are just basically like placeholders locations. Uh, we got lights. That should be pretty self-explanatory. You can create a light source, camera. You can create a camera, audio source, audio source splines, navigation meshes. I think those are more map things. I've personally never used those. And then under primitives here, you can create a cube or a plane. A plane can be useful for creating like logos and stuff like that, by the way. Uh, let's see what's your view. Under here, you can select your camera. So let's say you want to view the indoor camera. That's the indoor camera there. And then there's an other camera. So yeah, there's that camera. Uh, the view, the indoor, cam the outdoor camera, huh? We've been looking on the outdoor camera. That's actually not a good thing, everyone. If you get into a mod and you start moving this camera around, this is the outdoor camera. You're going to break the camera in the mod. Uh, oops. Oh, well, minor details. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can view the wireframe. Show lights. Ah, this is a good one here, too. So you can actually see the lights. Normally, I leave that hidden. Otherwise, you see all these lines going all over the place, right? This, uh, this mod does not have a lot of lights, does it? Not a lot of lights at all. It looks like there's only two of them. Yeah, it looks like only two lights. So show, just uh, hide the lights here again. And then there's other stuff you can show and hide here as well, by the way. Uh, let's see, selectable, audio sources, cameras, terrains, yep, grids, poly count. Um, oh, profile here. This is a good one, too. If you are uh, maybe don't have the highest-end computer, you can try turning that down. Uh, let's see what's your scripts. Underneath the uh, scripts here, there's different things you can do. The only ones I use, because, again, I do vehicles, is I use the uh, dirt. So toggle dirt and toggle scratches. Uh, these do not work by default. You're going to get an error message. Should be fairly self-explanatory. You can fix it. You just have to move the in-game script to where it needs to be. Uh, Giants editor doesn't have the script where it needs, so it doesn't work. But if you were to toggle dirt, that turns all the dirt off on the mod. And if I were to toggle, I don't know if the wear is going to work. Because, again, this is a mod that's been converted that doesn't work right. Right? So, no, it didn't actually the door showed up there. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, you can turn off some of like, the console and stuff. So if you were to close that there, you can reopen it there. Uh, there's a help. I don't know that I've really ever used the help. You might want to go through that if you need some help with uh, something that's not to making sense in the editor here. So there you go, Evan. I think that's pretty much uh, Giants Editor. Uh, real, try to make it real quick there. There's a lot of things you can do with this uh, program here. And again, the material editing section here probably needs to be covered more in depth. But again, I think we could do an entire video on that, and that's probably what we'll end up doing. So again, you folks have any uh, questions about anything here, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time.